Sorry, c can you hear now me better? Loud and clear. Loud thank you. and clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, and and, and sorry. So the, thank you again, Madame Lagarde, for uh, your contribution. Uh, in, in your introduction, you mentioned the risk uh, and, and effects uh, associated to the COVID-19 crisis, and, and for sure, skyrocketing levels uh, of debt, both, both public and private, are one of the most uh, dangerous effects uh, uh, that we will have uh, to deal with in the, in the near future. Uh, in the past days, someone, including the President of the European Parliament, is starting to discuss about the possibility to cancel in the future part uh, of the debt purchased by the ECB uh, under its uh, uh, APP uh, program. We know that uh, there are limits uh, in, the, in the treaty, and I don't want to to touch this point since uh, it's a political choice, it's a political discussion. Uh, I, I just would like to know technically what would be the impact of debt cancellation on the ECB and, and in particular if the related losses could harm ECB capacity in pursuing uh, its monetary policy goals. If ECB would risk uh, bankruptcy or if a central bank runs under different rules uh, compared to private banks or, or uh, other private uh, companies. And uh, uh, can, can you also explain uh, how and why the ECB, as, as stated several times by, by the bank itself, can work also with a negative equity? Uh, is the ECB in, in some way uh, a special institution? Thank you very much. So much for your question, and it gives me a, ch a chance to be extremely brief in my response. Uh, while I have read within, I read with interest anything that uh, is uh, said, written, or interviewed by um, all members of European Parliament, particularly uh, their their president, indeed. And my response is very short because I don't even ask myself the question. It's as simple as that. Because anything along those lines would simply be a violation of the treaty. Uh, the ECB operates under the treaty. There's an article one, two, three of the treaty which uh, prohibits uh, that kind of uh, approach. And uh, I respect the treaty, period. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to... Uh Sorry, President, I have enough time for, for a follow-up, I think. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Zanni. You are right. You have time for a follow-up, please. Mr. Zanni, please go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. Uh, t thank you very much, President. Uh, I, I know, as I said, that there are limits in the treaties, but it could happen in the future that uh, um, without a formal cancellation uh, of the debt, uh, the ECB could incur in, in losses related to uh, its holdings under the APP. So uh, I would like technically to know uh, what would happen if those losses uh, will uh, uh, erode uh, the uh, the equity of the ECB, and uh, how is it possible that the ECB uh, could run also with negative equity? Well, you know, as the sole issue of euro-denominated central bank uh, money, the euro system will always be able to generate additional liquidity as needed. So, by definition, it will neither go bankrupt nor run out of money. And in addition to that, any financial losses, should they occur, will not impair our ability to seek and maintain price stability. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm afraid that it's yet again a fairly simple, straightforward uh, answer. But uh, that's, that's the reality that we are, we are dealing with. And I, I don't speculate uh, on, on alternative scenarios because we, are, we have a treaty. We are the only issuer. And uh, we are we are not uh, not at risk as a result. Thank you. <laughs>